I'm Chosen Architect, and this is FTB Genesis. So, as you see behind me, I've done a little bit of prep work, and that means today is going to be full automation. Or at least I'm gonna try my best to do some automation. I might be wondering, Chosen, what do you mean by automation? Well, last episode, we ended up getting the Applied Energistics set up, and we automated Certus Quartz, which is very important, because you need Certus Quartz for everything involving Applied Energistics. It's essentially its main block, right? Its main item. And uh, this allows us to make all kinds of stuff, including the Fluix Crystals, it allows us to make the Quartz Glass, and all of the stuff that we're gonna need. Now, I've already prepped up a few things to help us sort of jumpstart today. And that is gonna be that we need some sort of crafting processor. And so here I have a crafting co-processing unit, and we also have a crafting storage. This is really all you need to, to just start up Applied Energistics Auto Crafting. And so I'm gonna just right here, I'm going to place this in. And by default, this is automatically going to connect. And right here, we now have a connected storage that's going to allow us to store items when we craft, and then it's going to craft them. Now the processing units are kind of important, and they play a powerful role in your auto crafting setup with Applied Energistics. Basically what they allow uh, things to do is whenever you have a pattern provider, which is what we're going to use for crafting items, the pattern provider essentially is going to, or the coprocessor is essentially gonna allow the pattern provider to send to multiple molecular, well, if I can talk, molecular assemblers. So let me go ahead and uh, grab some assemblers. So by default, um, the pattern providers can send to one molecular assembler, but if I have two coprocessing units, essentially I should be able to now, when I craft something, it should be able to send to, for example, three molecular assemblers to ultimately do the craft if need be. Um, and so that will spread out the workload and allow this to craft things faster. But you don't necessarily need this for your basic pattern crafts. Really, to get started, all you really need is a pattern provider that's connected to your network in some way, and you need it connected to a molecular assembler. So if I place this here, and I have a molecular assembler next to it, and I put patterns in here, it's going to go over here and craft the item and then send it back and it'll go into the network. That's pretty straightforward. But like I said, the coprocessing unit allows you to add more molecular assemblers per pattern provider and allow it to actually utilize them. Now the storages I'm gonna be getting into, the storage just allows whenever you do do a craft, it's going to allow the craft to store the items for the craft inside of the system. And this helps with bigger crafts uh, that way you don't start requesting things and pulling things out of your storage that you initially sent to be crafted because that can cause your crafts to fail now in our quest we do get a, a few more rewards like some accelerators we also get this mega pattern provider which is going to be great because this allows us to do processing things which we're going to talk about in a second uh, so i went ahead and made myself a pattern screen so we can start with our auto crafting processes and let's just go ahead and put this right here for now and we need patterns, blank patterns, in order to start making some auto crafts. Um, so some of the first things that I would like to auto craft is going to be processing things. And that's going to utilize this advanced inscriber. Um, so let's go ahead and make another, pa or actually, let's just utilize this. Let's utilize the provider here, this. And it has two more row, or has another row, compared to this one only having one. What we should be able to do with an advanced inscriber is we can set up all of our processes related to the inscriber directly on here. And all we have to do is place it directly on the provider. It is that simple. The cool part about the advanced inscriber is this is basically an insert slot. So when it's connected to your network, it'll automatically send the item back into the system. And this is smart enough to know where to put everything based on your craft. So to define how we're going to auto craft everything, to auto craft all of the basic processors, all we need to do is just send it the items required, like so, and it will automatically start processing those when we send a request. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and put the silicon and we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and pull out the pattern for the calculation. So we can hit one, and whenever I start this, we can actually see it sent the items in, it does the process, we can speed it up by putting speed upgrades in, and it has now crafted it. 
pretty straightforward. Now there's gonna be a lot of fun auto crafting things that we're gonna get into and a little bit more with the advanced um, setup here. But the cool thing is we don't have to worry about channels so it makes this so much easier. Normally this would be a channel nightmare, but thankfully we don't have to worry about that too much. Now, I wanna automate patterns. Patterns are usually one of the first things you wanna automate. I'm gonna need Certus Dust, so I gotta think about this as, okay, well, we're gonna to need to process Certus, and so that's gonna be a processing pattern. And then we're gonna to need to craft, and this is going to be a patterning code. So we're gonna craft this. Um, now, keep in mind that whenever things like this does get crafted, if we wanted to use substitutions, we can actually substitute here by allowing substitutions. And this is really powerful when we get into later things, things that use MBT data and all kinds of other stuff. This is really, really helpful for that. And Applied Logistics does it really well. Um, so now we have two different patterns. So the, the crafting ones go into the molecular assembler setup, and I'm going to set up a different way of handling this later on. But essentially, this is how this is going to work. We're gonna get those items moved over, and then we go back into our pattern and we go, okay, I want to ultimately craft the full thing. And so now we have another craft, put that over here, and if I was to make some patterns, uh, I think we can craft everything right now except for processing glass, which we don't have set up just yet, but eventually we'll have a way of doing that. Right now we can just go, okay, I want 10 patterns, and then it's going to automatically choose the processor, but our main CPU has a storage of 148 and has two coprocessors, and this is what it would automatically choose. And whenever I start that, we're gonna see it doing the craft over here, and then it's ready to go. And if we had multiple molecular assemblers, it would make it even faster by utilizing the extra coprocessors and sending to those adjacent molecular assemblers. Now, this is the basics, the bare bones, the fundamentals of auto crafting with applied energistics. And there's more things you can do than just even this. Now, some things that are gonna be fundamental is going to be making sure that we can supply our own applied energistics system with crafting components. Um, so things such as our processors, which we've only half done with these patterns right here. We need to fully turn these processors into their main component and actually uh, laser them. So to do that, we're gonna need to use a pattern provider. And I've already got the AutoCraft roughly set up over here, so it's going to go through all of the items needed until it finally crafts the pattern here. So how are we gonna make these patterns? And this is something that we need to keep in mind. You can actually set up pattern providers for all kinds of different things. Stone cutters, smithing tables, processes, and crafting. Processes are very important because, for example, this is going to allow us to do the processors and do their final shape crafting here. So essentially, we're just gonna tell the, the, pro, or tell the pattern provider to send something, uh, this circuit, and that something is going, going, then going to do something, and it should return a logic processor. If it doesn't, then it will continue to wait for that item um, until you cancel the craft. So this essentially is going to send it here, and now we've made another process similar to how this is processing right here. But this instead, we're gonna do something a little bit different to it. So what we need here is a wrench, and I'm going to go underneath this area here. And what I wanna do is I wanna to go to our send barrel, which is right here, and I wanna place my pattern provider right underneath it. Now, by default, this is going to work and it should know that there's an inventory right here and it'll send there. But we can be more specific with it and we can actually rotate this and you see there's an arrow there and we can rotate this until we have the arrow facing up. And by default right here, the arrow would be facing up. So if we go ahead and show this, see the arrow is facing up. And that's to be more specific on the direction that it's actually sending the items. So now that we have that, we can do one of two things. We can have that send here and then use an importer to send the items back over here, or we can just use some sort of pipe to pipe the items back into this because this does have a return inventory. Now, I think in just this case, I'm going to just use an importer, but yeah, keep in mind that you can send this directly to the provider, not necessarily sending it through a cable. Um, so let's go ahead and tap this into the main network. And so now this should be hooked in and we should see the devices online once it's connected, device online and device online. So now whenever we craft this, we can request a pattern for this particular task. And you can do this for every task. 
Any task can be done this way. This is why it's so powerful. So let's go ahead and now say processor. And I'm going to middle mouse click this. And middle mouse click is supposed to allow me to request crafts that we uh, don't have, or re request crafts even if we have items in here. But this is where you might have to go into your option settings and under control and for sort inventory, it's going to be middle mouse button. And this usually conflicts with the everything. So I'm gonna set mine to T because while you're in an inventory, T will not open up your chat. So I'll just use T to sort inventory now. And this should allow me to then middle mouse click. And now we can start requesting items. Look at that. I can go ahead and say, let's do six of them. And it's going to start the initial process here. Finish that up. And then it's going to populate this chest. And then our process is going to start working here. And it's going to take a little time for these to work. The processors by far take the longest amount of time to process. But we can do that for this. We should be able to now send items into our pressure chamber through the same method and even potentially get our dust processed over here and even get an electric furnace set up for this. Now, when you start to run out of space inside of your initial pattern provider, keep in mind that these are uh, tileable. So you're able to tile these up and make sure to do this sort of pattern uh, that you see here. And if I go ahead and, and request another pattern provider, um, let's see, pattern. If I go ahead and request like two more of these and the assemblers, I can show you, this is how you're going to want to tile these up. Um, so for this, you'll just go ahead and place this here and here, and you'll sort of continue this pattern. Um, and this is going to give you a lot of space. And it's also going to be pretty efficient because each one of these are going to have two different assemblers that it can craft to. This is sort of maximizing the amount of pattern space that you can have, and also you're sort of taking a cut technically in the amount of uh, places it can craft things. In theory, it should have access to one, two, three, and four different places that it can craft, so four molecular assemblers. So in reality, if you're utilizing these setups, make sure you have at least three co-processing units to really get everything out of these particular setups. Now, here's another nice little feature that Applied Energy 6 has added. Um, and it's the ability for you to request on demand while crafting. So let's say I want to make a pattern access terminal. I don't have a current provider in here. And we can see that by when we hover over this, it'll show it's blue, meaning we can request it. We have a crafting for it, but we don't actually have it in stock. So we can actually hold down control and when we click this, it's gonna automatically perform the request for us. So we don't have to go in and manually craft this and manually click the button and go through. This is, this is saving so many steps. And so this basically allows me to easily automatically request something without making a significant pattern for it. Now, the reason why I made this access terminal is because this allows me to access all of my providers. Actually, it allows me to access all of the pattern providers throughout the entire network and entire grid. And we can see that here. And so right here is our molecular assemblers and it, you can just put the patterns directly in here. Now in the quest for our co-processing units, it's actually pretty nice. We do get a few niceties here and we can honestly just use this to expand what we currently have. And so I'm going to actually add on the 4K that we get from our uh, craft here. We also get a mega crafting unit. This is basically four co-processing units in one, um, essentially taking up the place of our current co-processing units. And so that works out perfect because we really don't need more than what we currently have here, at least at the moment. Now, currently I'm doing a little bit of cleanup work. I'm kind of moving things around, getting them out of the center. This is going to be a little bit different getting it out of the center. I'm going to leave that here for now for a while, but ultimately I'm getting things moved around so I can get some machines over here instead of where they're currently at so we can really start doing the processing. Now I do wanna move my screens and there's a cool way that we can do this using anchors. Um, so essentially we can take, for example, this calcite and I can turn it into a facade. And this is really cool with Applied Energistics. It allows me to do this. And then I can also remove that facade with a wrench. So pretty cool. Um, but I've got to get this done for each one of these pieces that I ended up removing. And to make a cable anchor, it's actually pretty easy. You just need some uh, a Certus knife. And then 
iron, and then you turn that into a cable anchor. So facades, very, very powerful. And I think they're honestly, they're done a little bit better. Uh, don't tell the refined storage dev, they're done a little bit better than refined storage as light doesn't bleed through these. It's actually kind of nice. It's, you, you really wouldn't, wouldn't even know. This right here is a facade, but it looks exactly the same as the adjacent block. And just like that, my terminals are now in the wall. It looks nice and clean. Now, after getting all of this sort of upgraded, I want to upgrade my machines here from IC2. And if I just take it up to tier two, this is going to be some incredibly fast machines and we won't need the transformer upgrade anymore to be able to support our MV. So the two machines that I definitely want to upgrade are going to be the electric furnace. So just upgrading this, we should be able to take the electric furnace and turn it into an induction furnace. And uh, with that uh, Im image on the top, with it being advanced, it should be able to just automatically accept MV. And then same for the macerator being able to crush things. Um, I want to upgrade this, but it is going to need some scrap metal to turn into a rotary macerator. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. This needs scrap metal. Apparently that comes from a compressor and we need to get scrap metal from a recycler. We don't have a recycler just yet, so we should probably make one so we can start producing these things. Now, in order to get Deep Slate, we can actually use this. Yeah, it seems a little odd breaking apart the base, but we should be able to break apart the base and get ourselves some calcite, and I can then use that uh, to make that recycler. We just need to essentially place this in, and I should be able to get two slabs. So I'll just toss this into my mana pool here. There we go. And this should be the deep slate we need. This is going to hurt. To be able to make the macerator and upgrade this thing is gonna cost so much materials to make this scrap because each of the scrap chunks just to make one blade requires eight of these compressed. And it's not even a guarantee to get these. I'm essentially going to need over seven stacks of iron or other materials to make this. Now I went ahead and set up the induction furnace here and I put a redstone inverter on this and this basically is going to increase its speed um, and it's gonna take a little bit of time to ramp up but with that inverter in there, um, basically it's going to allow it to sustain its max speed at a, a cost of a little bit of power. Uh, but that's gonna be great. We definitely want that running at max speed and this isn't going to basically require any overclockers. So I'm almost there, I need 56. There we go, we can stop scrapping our metal. I now have 56 of these. We need to put them into, <laughs> this is a lot by the way. We need to put them into the compressor and then this is going to compress them down into the parts we need. Now we just need a bunch of flint and I am so excited for this because this means we can process ores insanely fast and we can also use our new applied energistic system to do the processing for us. Uh, now this, watch how fast this can smelt these two items. Yes, so also the macerator will go just as fast on the next tier and that's without any upgrades in it. So now we have enough scrap metal blades in order to do this. Let's upgrade this bad boy. This is going to be so nice. <laughs> the rotary crusher. Oh, this is going to be good. Now we need to get our uh, machines basically set up. I need to get another inverter just like this one in here to keep it at 100% and we should be ready to go. Oh boy, this is going to be so good. So let's go ahead and get this hooked in. This is the rotary and it is able to accept this power. It doesn't have the same top, but one of the sides, the sides are the same on these machines. Um, and then this just needs the inverter just like the other one. So I put the inverter in that way it will max out at the 100% and will go incredibly fast. Now, here's the important part. I need to set up a way to get this to pull items and also send items. And can we do this from the same side? Well, that's where these import and export upgrades should come into play. Now, essentially what I wanna do with these upgrades is I believe I want them to be on the down. So I'm gonna shift and then I'm going to click, shift and click, and these are now both set to the down position. And that should work. Now, here's the problem. I only have one slot, so I might actually have to use redstone on this as we don't have any upgrade slots. We only have these two, so yeah, I might have to go the old school redstone torch route. Now, I should be able to simply put the uh, export to the bottom and the import to the bottom on here. And this should allow the interactions with this provider. Now. 
Let's go ahead and test real quick with a simple pattern. Let's go ahead and let's say copper dust, and we'll say a smelting recipe here for the copper dust in this. So hopefully this will work. Um, now it would be faster if we had this set up to do like two, but I'm just gonna do one for right now. And we'll place this inside. And then we'll just make sure that this is actually going to work. Um, so now let's place, make sure we have some copper dust in here and copper. And then we'll go ahead and, and request uh, like 10 copper ingots. So let's actually see real quick. We have 207. So let's do this. We should have 217 after that does a process. Okay, so what I'm not, no what I'm noticing is it's not actively sending to here um, for some reason. And this is online. So why are we not seeing the items go through? This right here, by the way, is a common problem that you might encounter. So it appears that uh, it, it's just simply not importing the items. So we might have to have the crafter on top of this to be able to send the items in and then use an importer on the bottom to pull back. And that would make this a little bit cleaner looking. So maybe we can see if it's gonna work this way. So I switch the export to the up position and then we're gonna go ahead and put that pattern in. And then let's go ahead and put the export to up. Hopefully that will just hopper back into that. And now let's go ahead and test out the copper and see if this is going to work. So we'll do 10 more. And we're seeing that it is actually working now. So it is sending the items to it, and then it is being exported back into the provider, just like we want. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put the exporters here, and now we should be able to assign both of these to be able to process ingots on demand. Now, for example, we should be able to take like raw copper, and we should be able to see what it's used in, and we can find the machine, like the macerator, and we'll see that the recipe is one, and then gives us two, and then we can build the pattern accordingly. And now what we should end up with is a way to request ingots and it should be able to make the dust for us on demand and let's do 10 more. And now it should send the material here to be processed, which it, it looks like it's, it was that fast, right? It is incredibly fast. And then it should basically make the ingots. So uh, now you see, that we already have the ingots. That's pretty cool. Now our smelting pattern provider specifically, we may want to actually use that mega one for it. Uh, the mega one is just going to have so many more slots and uh, it's going to make it a lot easier for us. So we're probably going to have more smelting recipes than anything. Now I did encounter a couple of things that is going to require the alloyer and to automate that it's, it's going to be just about the same. Um, so this is going to require, for example, sand, and then the aluminum itself. So we should be able to send these two items, hopefully, into the system, and that should be able to produce the aluminum into our alloyer. Um, so let's go ahead and test that. That's gonna be a good thing to test. And we should have some laying about. So let's request 10. I should have enough sand. And let's see, is that going to send both of the things in there? And it does, and it handles it well. Perfect, so we just kind of have to balance out how many upgrades this can handle before it starts to overload. Seems like four is good, and we're good. And this is only still on the basic tier. Now, even though we don't have the the coal coke fully automated just yet, it, it shouldn't be too much to get that done. Uh, we can probably go ahead and still get a recipe made up for the steel. So it's just going to be coal coke and iron, and that's gonna produce steel for us. And that'll also go in the alloyer, and that should, be just about it for at least right now. And we're getting things automated. Now, interestingly enough, I am going to need a little bit of glass for right now. And this is where not having a lot of slots kind of are a problem. And I don't know if there's ways of adding more of the uh, the expansion slots. I'm surprised that the higher tiers doesn't have more of them, considering it is a higher tier machine like these. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna replace the torch, put a torch here instead, remove this, and then I'm gonna place a cobble upgrade in here so we can start producing sand. And this should start producing quite a bit of sand. And uh, let's see, we should start to see sand building up. And that's exactly what I need because I want to start stockpiling a bit of glass. So I just found a weird thing and a weird interaction that, I mean, it is my first time using IC2 in this capacity. But whenever I do this and I went to make a craft 
it's not actually processing anything. Notice this number is not going up. It's reaching there, but this is still going somewhere, right? Or is it? I don't know. <laughs> what I think it's doing is importing the items back in or just voiding them entirely. I really don't know, um, which is not good. So what I'm thinking about doing to hopefully solve this weird janky problem um, is to just use an importer on the bottom um, to just go ahead and make sure that it is going to import out the bottom. And if that's the case, then we don't really have to worry about any sort of extraction or export upgrades. We can just simply send it to the bottom. And then we don't have to worry about this. Uh, having redstone, we can just simply pull the items out from the bottom. So no need for these exporters. So now I should be able to call like glass, a bunch of glass. Let's go ahead and say, I don't know, 400 glass. And now I should be able to start that. And now it should be exporting. Yeah, that glass is going somewhere. And I went ahead and put upgrades in here because these are ones you get from the quest. So there we go. We have some IC2 automation done. Now, I also want to automate the process of making circuits and circuits are not easy to make uh, and they are quite expensive in order to make as well. And there's actually an alternative recipe. We can do infused alloy and in an assembler that we already have and we can get them this way. Outside of that, it is a lot of copper and it's a lot of rubber. And so I think we can get away with that, but we just need to automate this, the metallurgic infuser. And yes, um, this can be automated and it's not too difficult. I have an importer on the bottom, I have my pattern up here, and then I have a barrel. And most other uh, mechanism machines are quite easy to automate as you can do it from one machine, but this has two slots that we have to manage. And this is where these logistical transporters come into play. Now you're also gonna need a configurator to be able to configure this, but I'm just going to set this to the pull mode and then we need to configure the machine. Now, you can move this around, which makes this really nice to be able to see the colors. But this left slot is going to be uh, the yellow. And so we'll go ahead and say, let's make that yellow. And then on the top, we're going to make sure that is set to red. And then the output is blue. So let's go ahead and set the output to blue and make sure this is set to auto eject on. That should be it. And now you see everything is connected. And it should, this right here, pattern provider, should automatically send the items to the barrel. And then this should distribute the items the way it should know how to do. Um, so if everything is set up correctly, we should be able to put the alloy in here, which is just one redstone and one iron produces the alloy. And we should be able to now craft the alloy. Let's craft 10 of them and let's run over here. It shouldn't be too fast, but we'll see it sending the iron and the redstone then will get piped to the other side. And then that will start to produce up and it'll buffer up the redstone and then it'll output that. Now we just simply need to take that recipe, the infused alloy, and we need to just create a recipe like this. And now we can put that over here. So, and then this is already automated, so it shouldn't be too hard for this to learn that. And now we have a way of making circuits automatically. It's pretty cool. Who knew automating could be so fun? Now, there's a lot of things that are still going to need to be automated, and it's only going to expand as we move forward. And, uh, well, you could do all of this by hand if you really wanted to, but that would make things take way, way longer. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you learned something new, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video a huge thumbs up. We're one step closer to saving Illyria. Oh, goodness. And hopefully you guys are joining me on that journey. And well, guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Iron Rowan. Thank you so much for your amazing support and contributing over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And now I hope you have a great rest of your day. Of course, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.